Good afternoon, everyone. Wynn Brown here with Haywood Healthcare's update for the week ending Friday, July 9. I have two guests with me today, uh, Dr. Vinod Mahan, who everybody I think is familiar with over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, has spoken to staff and the community a number of times. And we have Jason Mori also here today, who's the Director of Pulmonary and Neurodiagnostic Medicine, and he's gonna talk a little bit about uh, the work that he and his team are doing on the Haywood campus as well. So maybe we'll first start um, with uh, Jason and then we'll talk about the Delta variant um, after that. So Jason, just can you tell us a little bit about ourself, yourself, introduce yourself to the community and to some of the staff who might not know you, though I think you've been here long enough so your face is very familiar. Well, thank you. Yes, uh, I oversee the neurodiagnostic and pulmonary or respiratory side for both Haywood and Athol. We're a team of about 25 in total. We have about 22 respiratory therapists between the two uh, facilities. We provide 24 hour care to our patients. One of the biggest things with COVID was the ventilators. Right. Manage the ventilators, manage the ventilators. But we actually also do a lot of patient care for everything respiratory related. So those suffering from diseases like COPD, asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, things like that. We do a lot of oxygen therapy, management, disease management, education, everything around those um, patients that have prolonged respiratory illnesses. Mm -hmm. Our need right now in that area, now that COVID has changed a little bit, is, is focused on bettering the patients in our area with COPD. COPD never went away, hasn't gone away, it's not gonna go away. Unfortunately, those that have COPD may have resisted in coming into the hospital. Mm -hmm. So their diseases have progressed, but their care is not. So our team is really focused on trying to bring their care back online so that we can try to keep them healthy and at home. Stable. And stable, very much so. And our neurodiagnostic side, we actually have is, um, we have a lab here where we do outpatient procedures for EEGs and EMGs. And those are uh, with our new uh, neurodiagnostic physician, uh, neurologist, Dr. Brayback, joined us in October. So we're super thrilled to have him here. In addition to the rest of the team. Yep, in addition to our rest of our team. And how are we doing on staffing? I know we, we talked a little bit about some of the challenges, maybe a little infomercial out there <laughs> for uh, recruitment uh, to your team. Yes, definitely. On both sides, we are we're short. Uh, respiratory therapists are in need profession. Even before COVID, we were very much in need. And now after COVID, it's even more so. Unfortunately, uh, we do not have enough respiratory therapists that are graduating from school to replace those that are about ready to retire. About one third of the respiratory therapists in Massachusetts alone could retire in the next couple of years. And we only put out about 90 new respiratory therapists a year in Massachusetts. So there's a critical need, critical shortage. It's the perfect time to, to get into healthcare and to join a great growing profession. Great team. And you joined us how long ago? March 2020. Right, so March, the, right, right, right. The pandemic and you've been a fantastic member of the team and a fantastic leader. And tell us why our respiratory team is the best. And why you want to come to Haywood? Yeah, Haywood is and Apple and Apple. Hey, the Haywood Healthcare System is very different compared to some of the other larger owned systems that I've worked with. Haywood actually cares about its staff. It cares about its team, and it cares about its patients. And for me, that that's been the, the difference. You know, to come in here knowing my community members uh, because I am a local. This is also where I come to get my care. So being able to see that, interact with these. You know the, the providers and the patients and um, it's just a different atmosphere we respect one another we have a, a lot of team building within each other um, we really do believe in the mission that we have here so it's it's really a great opportunity we are a little bit further out than your major medical boston hospitals but we are such unique i tell facility. everybody it's just psychologically far away it's it an is. easy counter commute out route too so if you have a family member or you are a respiratory therapist uh, and interested, uh, hop on our website and, and take a look at those career opportunities and you get to work with Jason and his colleagues who are fantastic. So uh, thank, thank you. you. May I add, from as an infectious disease doc, the, the contributions given by the respiratory therapy team is immense and many times not mentioned. And like, when you talk about friend line, like, that they are the front line and every other front line comes after them. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way to, uh, as a carrier, and it's a great way to kind of uh, help yeah. uh, patients 
people are really, really sick, and then the time is a constraint. So thank you so much. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work here, right? <laughs> so let's talk about uh, some of the great work that you're doing right now, and in particular, um, talk maybe a little bit to our staff about uh, the Delta variant and what, it, what are the symptoms which are different than yes. the first phase of the pandemic, and also I think a call out to the community and to our staff who are not yet vaccinated and why those who are vaccine hesitant, why it's important, especially with these variants, for everyone to get vaccinated and can be vaccinated. Definitely. So um, we keep hearing variants in every media outlet. So I think it's important to, before we talk about Delta variant, we need to know what we talk about is like variant. So, COVID virus or coronavirus keeps multiplying, they multiply very fast, but it's, it's, when it multiplies, it makes a lot of bad copies of virus. And most of the bad copies dies off, but few of the bad copies get some of the, the abilities <clears throat> to do better. And they actually get selected out and grows more and outnumbers the, of the virus and uh, helps it to become what we call the dominant uh, variant. And that's what uh, many times, and of the dominant variants, WHO will have some variant of interest. And this interest in that variant comes from these three factors. One, is it gonna infect more people, meaning increase infectivity than the regular coronavirus? Is it gonna be more lethal, meaning for a thousand people, if it infects thousand people, are they gonna kill more people? And the third one is the immune escape. Is the variant gonna um, escape the immunity provided by the vaccine? And if those are the concern, it becomes a variant of concern. And then we get to see all these names of Alpha, Delta, a UK variant, or a South African variant. Um, so the current one um, that is predominating is the Delta variant or B16172 which is the, the official name. So the, why is it a concern, variant of concern? Uh, it's because it has significantly increased infectivity rate, meaning 60 to 70% increased infectivity than the UK variant, which in itself had 50% increased infectivity than the, the initial COVID-19 in the United States. So you are seeing compared to how COVID-19 virus was in the US, the Delta variant is significantly more infectious. Now, it is not fully uh, studied whether it's gonna increase the lethality, meaning whether it's gonna kill more people within 1,000 infected, but if you have more people who get infected, overall the total number of people, it is 10 to 20% within that group is gonna have a lethal outcome, so, the rates are probably gonna be the same, but the total number of people, lives lost can, will definitely go up and then infectivity goes up. Now, our vaccination rates are improving. Massachusetts have almost 60%, but we have to understand that 60% is predominantly in elderly and predominantly in some pockets. There are a lot of pockets of people uh, within the um, Massachusetts where vaccination rates are very low. Our young adults are not fully vaccinated. Uh, so when we take about that population, the numbers are very low. The vaccination rates are very low. The good thing about here is, even if it is Delta variant, Pfizer, Moderna, it's not just, it's based on good study reports and surveys that it is very effective in decreasing the chance of infection, decreasing the chance of hospitalization, and ultimately preventing death. So it can affect young people. It can definitely un affect the, uh, uninfected young people much faster than the, the, the usual COVID infections are. And if the young people have a lot of comorbidities, it can in definitely increase the chance of fatality, meaning death. So it's extremely important, especially with the Delta variant emerging as the major variant in the US, 
that we should get vaccinated. The risk of getting a Delta variant infection and the risk of vaccination is not comparable. The vaccines are extremely safe and effective in preventing the infection, effective in preventing the transmission, and we should, we all should be vaccinated to prevent and be normal uh, when we move forward. Um, so uh, this is gonna be the major variant and the vaccines work and we should prevent it by getting vaccinated. So we need to keep getting everyone vaccinated who isn't vaccinated. And one of the things that we've been talking about and expect to make an announcement next week is um, mandating vaccines for all staff at Haywood. We're, we're currently around 80, 81%, which actually for hospitals in the Commonwealth is, is, is a fairly significant rate. But uh, given the variants that are out there and protecting our patients, um, we're probably going to I definitively say that we're going to uh, announce mandatory vaccination uh, at some point in time next week um, ahead of the FDA approval because it's that important. And this has been done uh, in many other major health systems and uh, the data of, uh, even though there is no EU approval, there's a full approval yet, the, the data of the vaccine use and the side effect profile is well out there and we, we know from really peer-reviewed, well-vetted studies that it's an extremely safe vaccine and it is, it's extremely effective, so why not? Right, so, look, that, so we're working on our communication plan to make sure that we can roll it out well uh, probably next week. And so we'll, play, we'll you'll obviously are involved deeply in that to make sure that we communicate it well and make sure staff feel comfortable uh, knowing that, and, but also just letting the community know who also watch this video, how important it is. So you may be a parent or a grandparent who is vaccinated and you were first in line and at our vaccine clinics, but your children or your grandchildren uh, need to get vaccinated as well. And we need you to be the advocates to the younger generation who um, have heretofore not gotten vaccinated and exactly. make sure that everybody who gets vaccinated can get vaccinated. We provide, still continue to provide vaccines without clinic uh, largely through access through our yeah. pediatrics practice. Uh, so we have a setup and you just have to call us and we'll take care it's of it. It's not the problem of availability, it's about um, coming forward and right. getting it. Right. I'm waiting for my four year old and <laughs> my nine year old to get vaccinated as soon as. It's right, as soon as it comes out, yeah. your kids. Yeah, I'm gonna get yeah. vaccinated. And you are, the, you are the resident expert in our region. Yeah. So and if you trust it, there's really no reason for anybody else not to try it. I, I, I'm just letting know why it's not available. That's my right, right. Well, hopefully soon. I know you have to leave and go take care of some patients, but appreciate you taking time thank to you. educate us all as always. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, we'll be back to you uh, next Friday. Just a good uh, news on update for our positivity rating. Our seven day rolling average is 0.58%. So we are in relatively good shape, but given the discussion with Dr. Mahan and the Delta variant and other variants out there, really encouraging our younger people in our population to get vaccinated so that we can keep uh, the, the low positivity rate in our region and, and, and not stress the resources of, the, of your local hospitals and healthcare providers. So thank you for everybody, uh, for everything you do to keep us on our journey to be one of the best community-owned health systems in America. Have a great weekend.